What is going on everybody? I just wanted to make a quick uh, video talking about how I was able to study and basically destroy the CSCS exam. So uh, a little bit about my background. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in kinesiology. I'm actually working on my master's degree right now. Um, I have a physical education credential. Um, 29 years old and I basically just uh, took the test a few days ago and destroyed it. Um, I was, I've been involved with sports my whole entire life. Um, and then I began working out um, pretty consistently at the age of about 13 years old. Um, and I was lucky enough to have a, an, an Olympic weightlifting coach that was also a CSCS, a USAW as well, um, who kind of planted some of that stuff in my mind that that was something that I wanted to do early on. Um, and that's been a goal of mine, um, you know, since about, you know, since I was in the military, you know, probably about 20, 22 years old or something like that. And uh, finally was able to achieve it, so it's a big deal, and I know it's a big deal to uh, a lot of you out there um, studying for the test. So basically when, when the coronavirus hit, uh, I was working, you know, the schools shut down, and I decided it was a great time to um, kind of kind of hunker down and start studying super hardcore uh, for the test and that was in March and now we're in August uh, so I studied uh, I studied hard for about five months I, I um, and I kind of just want to detail to you guys uh, the methods I took uh, to pass the test I actually think I could have taken the test earlier and passed it but um, similar to how a lot of you feel you know there's a lot of nerves and, and you don't want to waste your money in terms of you know taking the test early and failing or anything like that um, a few other things uh, all I did was I, I purchased the test I had the book and I took no additional um, classes uh, through the NSCA or any other, you know, anything like that. Um, used uh, YouTube videos. Of course, I just wanted to save money. I, I felt like um, being someone who considers himself uh, a strength conditioning professional, even before I had the credential, I just felt like, um, you know, there, there's no secrets. I could figure it out and I didn't need to pay any more money. You know, I'm kind of, kind of frugal like that. Um, so uh, I have my little information right here. Um, on the scientific foundations, I had a 72 out of 80, so that's an A, that's 90%. And then on the practical applied, uh, I had a 99 out of 110, so that's also uh, an A, it's, I'm pretty sure. Um, so, in my opinion, I destroyed the test. Um, if you're not a member of the CSCS exam prep uh, Facebook page, I highly encourage you to jump on there. There's just like a ton of great information. Uh, and just topics that get talked about in detail. Um, as you may have heard already, that page oftentimes can kind of can kind of worry you or scare you because a lot of the stuff that gets brought up on there is super detailed and probably even more um, or definitely more um, in depth than what the exam has. But it's just a great place to um, to help support you in your studying. So I would encourage that. I know that about a week before, maybe a few weeks before the test. I actually jumped off of that because you know I didn't want to cause myself extra worry um, because that's that's one problem people have is if you if you're if you have all these sources of information you end up kind of um, overriding your system and you you can't really just focus on what you need to focus on you have too much information coming in and it's kind of throwing you off so in a way I feel like you have to control how much uh, input you have so that you can really process the information and learn it so. I'm gonna start from the beginning. I think that everybody should read through the book, right? I read through the book one time. Some people say you should read through it more times. I don't think that's necessary. So I think you should read through the book word for word one time. Uh, after you read through the book, after I finished each chapter, I would go back through the book at all my highlights and I would take very detailed notes on the most important things in that chapter. So. Uh, for example, I basically tried to pull out and I went through the book with the idea of every time it said uh, something about how this applies to athletes or how this uh, will cause an adaptation in athletes, I wrote that down. Uh, and, and just big picture ideas, write that stuff down. My initial impression after taking the test was that it was not super in-depth um, on, on the sciences. It, was not, it would not ask you something super deep about certain things. It was more about... Uh, a broad, shallow um, questions. So that's that's something that I would tell all of you uh, uh, to to help you guys out. I would I would go more broad and shallow. Of course, like I said, read the book, try to have an understanding of it. I think uh, especially the science chapters might be difficult for some of you if you don't have a kinesiology background. 
but read it. Don't get too caught up on any, uh, any, any of the real scientific stuff. Just have a broad understanding. Of course, when you're going through like the, uh, say the uh, physics chapter, you, you should know like, you should understand like lever systems and things like that. Like that directly applies to what we do. But again, you don't need to get super, like I think, you know, I remember thinking like uh, it talked about muscle protein synthesis and like the, the A, the AKT, mTOR pathway, whatever. It's like, no, you're not, maybe you'll get one question, but you can't really worry about, you always have to think about is this worth that mental effort to memorize this stuff? Or would you be better off uh, moving on and just forgetting that and having more of a broad depth of knowledge? And I think you're better off in that way. So after I, I, I read the chapters, took detailed notes on each chapter, and then after I got, each, each time I would finish a few chapters, I would, I would run through those notes again, look through the notes. <clears throat> and then I would take even, I would take those detailed notes and create note cards. cards. I actually have those right here. Uh, just so you can kind of get an idea. I don't know how many I have here, but uh, you know, I don't know, maybe maybe 50 or 60. <clears throat> and after I ran through those, you know, a few times through the note cards, I never had to go back through the chapters really because I had all the information I needed. Um, of course, as I went through different, uh, you know, on the Facebook page or on YouTube videos, sometimes I would dive back into a certain topic on a different chapter just to hone in on that. So, uh, next. Creating charts, this is obviously huge. Um, you should, uh, of course, if you've been looking into and doing your due diligence, you should have a chart on, you should definitely have memorized the uh, nutrition guidelines for aerobic and anaerobic athletes, right? You should have that written down somewhere. Um, also, I think something critical is the uh, periodization chart. This is the straight chart from the, uh, from the book 21.2. I would recommend that you guys literally just memorize this. Uh, as the test got closer, a few weeks before the test, I just started writing this down, basically like word for word. I would just practice writing it down, uh, just so I had it memorized. And you know, a lot of questions on the test are going to be based off of stuff from here. So you want to be very familiar with just like the language, the different preparatory period, general prep, specific prep, first transition, things like that. So that when they ask you questions like that, it's just it's a no brainer. And there's a, there's a lot of questions that'll be like that. So the periodization stuff. Um, a few other things, of course the norms, right? You want to have all the norms for all the sports uh, and, and based on what I you know, figured out from the exam prep Facebook page, the 60th percentile. So I created you know, a chart with the norms, uh, fiber types for every sport, um, body fat percentage, VO2 max, bench squat clean, vertical jump, um, standing broad jump. All that kind of stuff. I think this chart is super legit. I was looking at this thing for months, and by the time the test came, I had this totally down. And when it asks you those questions on the test, it gives you like a, a sample athlete and their test scores. Knock it out of the park. Don't even have to think twice about it because whatever number's off, you just you already know it. So if you guys actually want to uh, take a look at this, go ahead and uh, DM me, and I'll uh, I could send this over to you to help you guys out. But I do think that it does help you to create your own. But again, if you, if you get this early on and just study it daily, you know, and, and you don't have to worry about none of this stuff you have to memorize in a day. But if you look at it a few times a week for a couple months, you'll have it down. Uh, the other thing, like possibly many of you, I had a lot of experience in uh, strength training, um, but not as much experience with uh, endurance and conditioning type of training. So I'm not sure what chapter it is, it's like chapter 20. There is a, a chart that kind of breaks down all the, um, the endurance, uh, the aerobic training styles or types. So you got long, slow distance, pace, tempo, interval, uh, hit training, and fartlek. Um, so this was all stuff that in my, like I wasn't real clear on uh, as I began studying. So I kind of dove into that chart as well. And I actually began running myself just so I could get an idea of all these workouts. So I'd run through workouts. Um, you know, I did multiple workouts of each style. And that's just really going to drive home the, uh, the learning process, you actually getting out there and doing it. Uh, another thing that helped me out a ton is I, I looked up, I was looking up like training for endurance athletes and I, and I came across uh, Nick Bear's uh, Bear Performance Nutrition YouTube page. Um, you know, I have no affiliation with him or anything. But the interesting thing is he's training for marathons and Ironmans on his, uh, on his YouTube page. And if you, if you go on to his page, I watch a ton of his videos, he always is having different workouts of these styles, and I'd be able to watch it and identify what style, and that really helped me figure out the, the uh, endurance uh, style 
uh, of training and just like all the methods that go into that. And uh, you definitely, definitely when it comes to all the stuff should know the, um, you should know the progressions, you should know the frequency, all that kind of programming uh, type knowledge you should understand. But again, don't forget more of a broad base of knowledge. Don't get too much into the weeds on, on any of it. But like I said, some of these charts I think will serve you well. And like when it comes to the nutrition, I think if you just know the, the, the basic stuff that's laid out in, in, the, in, the, in the chapter for the guidelines for aerobic and anaerobic athletes, I don't think that you really need to get too caught up into any of the, the deep stuff. I think you should read it, like I said, a once through, take some good notes on it. But in terms of like trying to memorize every single little like uh, uh, thing, like I don't think you need to. Like I didn't, I didn't have memorized the um, all the essential amino acids. Like that was just one of those things where I was like, that's not worth my time. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, I'm trying to think. Like the glycemic index, you should have a basic idea of what the glycemic index is. We all should. But like, there's a huge chart of all this stuff. Had 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 no idea. Um, I was just gonna take a nice guess if if, if a question like that came up. Uh, let me see beyond that I think as you go into the test so days before the test I began practicing everything I was gonna write down when I got into the test so I practiced writing down the uh, periodization chart basically all these charts I showed you I wrote down right when I got into the test before I even clicked start my, my screen actually logged out because I hadn't clicked start yet and the lady had to come in and, uh, and, and sign me back in because I sat there for like five minutes writing down these charts just off the top of my brain so that as I went through the test, I already had all the information right in front of me. Um, and so yeah, I think that's, if you do these things, like I said, I didn't do any extra, I didn't do any extra, uh, I didn't buy any extra stuff. I did have the pocket prep app uh, with all the test questions, but I think there's 800 questions. I don't even think I made it through 300 questions. So I just read the book took detailed notes on the, just like the big takeaways and the major concepts, made, made note cards on all that stuff. Um, and then, and then, like I said, I, I went, I went hard. Um, as the test became closer, I think you got to look at, of course, now that it's 2020 and beyond, you got to look deep into the psychology chapter. If you look at the, if you look at here, it says, so the psychology chapter has 19 questions. I mean, that's a ton of questions. So you absolutely need to know that that's, I mean, in terms of the, the scientific foundation, that's a huge part of it. It's literally just that stuff. And that stuff really isn't that deep. You know, you have positive uh, reinforcement, negative punishment, all that stuff. Feedback, uh, the, the theories of arousal. I mean, it's really not that that much. So just kind of get into that stuff and you already are well on your way. Um, of course, like I said, the periodization stuff. You don't want to forget about the chapters, the final two chapters in the book that kind of talk about the administration, the organization, and the law. Definitely uh, understand that. Um, but even some of those questions are gonna be, uh, you should know like the safety cushion and all that kind of stuff. You should know like the emergency uh, scenario or that you put up a placard on a broken piece of equipment, like that's important. So you should have basic understanding of all that stuff. But typically on the test, you know, it gives you three options. And, and, and the option, if you've read through it and, and spent your time, you're, you're, gonna, um, you're gonna be fine. Uh, I think that it's definitely realistic for you to take like one week per chapter, which I think would end up taking you about six months. Now, like I said, I went quicker than that. I think if you have a strong background um, in kinesiology and training, you won't have a problem uh, passing the test. Um, I thought a lot of people uh, talked about on the Facebook page how the practical applied portion was tough for them and the video uh, demonstrations. I thought the practical applied portion was super easy. And I don't mean to be like, like rude or anything like that. Like it was just, if you have coaching experience, that won't be that hard. They give you videos and the, the, the mistakes are obvious, super obvious. Like it's not, it's like if you've ever coached uh, for any amount of time or whatever, like it's obvious. If you haven't coached, then maybe you should think about getting some coaching experience before you uh, become a CSCS. That makes sense to me. Um, let's see. Um, you should, another thing I think you should dive into you should definitely know the, like every test in the book, you should know. Like it, like the Wingate, like I had never even heard about that before taking the test, but you should know that. the uh, There's like the Mar Margeria, Margera Kaleman test, super random, never heard of that before either, but just know it, know like how many steps there are, you know, nine steps, like, you know, whatever, You're, you got the timer on the third step and the ninth step. I was just going through each one, uh, you know, the T-test, 
Um, you should definitely know the exercises in the book, the stretches, PNF stretching, right? Just go through it. Kind of, you need to have an idea of what it is. So if it brings up an exercise, you have an idea of what that is, or it brings up a test. At least you can make an educated guess on the on the, on the answer. So I think that oftentimes too, again, people might get lost in the weeds of the scientific stuff, but then they don't they 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 didn't take the time to look through all the tests and read all the descriptions. Like I think that's actually very critical um, for this test, and it's something that people overlook because they're so worried about the deep science stuff. So. If I could give you uh, just this my piece of advice, kind of you know read the book, but then stay as you review before the test, stay stay broad, don't get too sucked in, um, and uh, I wish you all the luck in the world as you take it. You'll be nervous, but that's okay. Just work on your uh, your selective attention and diaphragmatic breathing to keep your uh, to keep your anxiety and state arousal down. And uh, good luck, guys.